Okay, in a previous video, we introduced the notion of a line integral over a vector field. So let's just recall that real quick. So we've got this uh, curve, which is given by this vector function r of t, where t goes from a to b. f is a vector field. And then this line integral f dot dr over the curve is given by the scalar integral from a to b of f evaluated at the curve dot r prime dt. And then let's recall this other definition that says that f is called a conservative vector field if there is a function little f where capital F is the gradient of little f. And um, I also want to point out that little f in this case is called the potential function of capital F. So now I want to present something uh, which is called the fundamental theorem of line integrals. And so FTLI, fundamental theorem of line integrals, and um, that says that this line integral over a vector field and this gradient is in some way, they are in some ways inverse operations of each other. So in other words, if we have a conservative vector field, then uh, calculating the line integral over that vector field is essentially the same thing as finding the potential function. So I've simplified all of that statement down to the following. So if we've got this line integral over a curve, let's say our curve is defined like this up here, um, of the gradient of f, so notice that's a conservative vector field, dot dr, that's going to be f, the potential function, evaluated at rb, so that's the end of of the curve minus that potential function evaluated at r of a. So that is the beginning of the curve. So let's look at a proof of this. And the proof I'm going to work with is really just the n equals 2 case. In other words, the two-dimensional case. So uh, in this setup, I'll say that my curve is given by um, the vector function x of t, y of t. And so that's going to make r prime equal to uh, dx dt, dy dt, like that. And then um, notice that if I have a potential function, I can write my gradient as um, df I should say partial f, partial x, partial f, partial y. So that's the definition of the gradient in two variables. So now let's go ahead and write down this line integral. And I should say that I'm leaving out some hypotheses like um, continuity of the function and maybe something to do with the smoothness of the curve and all of that kind of stuff. I like you guys look into a textbook like this. Here I just really want to work on the intuition for why this works. Okay, so that's what we're going for. We want to get to that right-hand side, but notice that by our um, constructed definition of this line integral, we can use this. So that is going to be um, the gradient of, so that's going to be the integral from a to b of um, df dx uh, dy, sorry, df dy evaluated on the curve, but I'll leave that out because it'll get kind of messy. And now we need to dot that with uh, r prime, so that's going to be dx dt dy dt like that. Okay, and then dt. But now the dot product of those two things is going to give us the integral um, from a to b of partial f, partial x, partial x, partial t, plus partial f, partial y, uh, dy dt, dt, like that. But now, notice, by the chain rule, that is exactly equal to the following. The integral from a to b of the derivative with respect to t of f evaluated at x of t, y of t, dt. But now using the fundamental theorem of calculus part one, not for line integrals or anything, just for regular old integrals, this derivative and this integral cancel each other and we evaluate at the end points. So that's going to give me f evaluated at x of b, y of b, 
minus f evaluated at x of a, y of a. But that is exactly r evaluated at b minus r evaluated at a. So that's exactly what we need here. Okay, I'll clean up the board and then we'll do an example. Okay, so for our example, we want to look at the uh, line integral over the vector field f, which is given by sine y in the i direction, and then x cosine y plus sine y in the j direction. And then we want c to be any path from 1 pi to minus 3 pi over 2. And that might seem impossible, but let's go ahead and look up here and notice that this line integral over um, a vector field of a conservative vector field only depends on the endpoints of the path and not what's happening in the center of the path. So that's actually totally possible here. All we need to do is find a little f with the gradient of little f equal to capital F and then plug in those endpoints and we're good to go. So notice that's going to be equivalent to the following. So f sub x, f sub y, that's the gradient of little f, needs to be equal to uh, sine y x cosine y plus sine y, so that vector field. But that means that f sub x needs to be equal to sine y, and that means that f sub y needs to be equal to x cosine y plus sine y. Now we can get that by working in a loop. So let's take the antiderivative of this with respect to x. So that's going to imply that f is equal to x times sine y, because sine y is a constant with respect to x, so it integrates like a constant, plus g of y, where that's any function of y. But now we can take the derivative of that with respect to y, and that's going to give us f sub y equals um, x cosine y, because again, taking the derivative with respect to y, x is a constant, plus g prime of y. So plus g prime of y. But now, notice that if we set these two equal to each other, we get g prime of y needs to be equal to sine y, which tells you that g of y equals negative cosine of y by taking the antiderivative. So in other words, we have the potential function of this thing is going to be equal to x sine y minus cosine y because that's what we figured out our function g was. So we have x sine y minus cosine y, great, uh, which means we can apply this fundamental theorem of line integrals pretty easily. I'll clean up the board and then we'll do that. Okay, so now we're good to go. So uh, by the fundamental theorem of line integrals, this integral over c of f dot dr, so that's going to be the integral over c of the gradient of our vector field uh, of our function um, x sine y minus cosine y dot dr. But now the gradient and the line integral cancel each other, and that's going to give us x sine y minus cosine y evaluated at the endpoints. So 1 pi and minus 3 pi over 2, like that. So notice if we plug in minus 3 pi over 2, that's going to give us minus 3 here, because cosine of pi over 2 is 1. Sorry, because sine of pi over 2 is 1, cosine of pi over 2 is 0. And now if we plug 1 pi into this, sine of pi is 0, cosine of pi is negative 1. So that's going to give us uh, plus minus 1. So that's going to give us negative 4. So that's going to be the value of this line integral. Okay, so this is a good place to stop.